I am uh, honored and thrilled to be the host here tonight. Uh, we're going to be showing the heart is deceitful above all things, which I'm looking forward to, to seeing. I've never seen. Um, it's really, I think, a, a labor of love in a lot of ways. Uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, Asia Argento, the filmmaker, the, the actress from, from Italy, the Italian star, the international star. I love her movies. Um, she read the book and was moved, like many of us, to do something about it. So as an artist, she decided to make a film. And of course, that film is based on uh, the book by Laura Albert. You may know her as J.T. Leroy, the literary yeah. outlaw. I first met uh, Laura three or four years ago. I was at a, uh, a Christmas party in my neighborhood, and uh, I saw her standing in the corner there, and I had to meet her for some reason. We went, I went up to her, and somebody introduced us, and we immediately hit it off. We had a, a nice, deep conversation about politics or philosophy. I can't remember exactly what it was. But that! Uh, that too. Yeah, that came later. But um, I had a, a sense of familiarity, uh, like I had known her, like we had met before. So I asked her, uh, have we met before? Do I know you? And she was like, no, uh, I don't think so. But you may know of me through my other name, J.T. Leroy. And then it hit me. I'm like, holy fuck, you're J.T. Leroy. So immediately I gave her a big hug and I told her that I loved her. Because when I read Sarah, it really, really moved me, really beyond expression. In a lot of ways I could relate to the story and it was just such a great novel in, in, in so many different respects. It was raw, and it was gritty, it was lyrical, and uh, it, it had that sense of truth that goes beyond the facts, which uh, to me is art. So, um, I just want to, uh, we're going to, tonight we're going to talk, me and Laura are going to talk, she's going to come up here and we're going to have a little conversation about her art and uh, the process and the movie and we've got uh, a lot of, a lot of things to talk about so let's get to it. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming um, the literary rebel, the literary groundbreaker, my good friend Laura Albert. the book she was interested in making movies she'd been looking for a project and she knew she wanted it and so when I went over there I was watching to see if she was someone who could handle it and it was very clear to me that she could because there was a lot of people that did want to make it but I was going to protect it it had to be someone who could handle it It's really, it's kind of a, a string of ten separate stories that all kind of come together. They're these two, these, the two main characters, Sarah and, uh, and, and Jeremiah. Um, I noticed, I mean, I mean, it's very graphic, the novel, and it, it's, it's very kind of, well, esoteric in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I'm wondering if you think that, uh, I mean, you know, you've seen the movie, obviously, if the movie kind of captures the essence, uh, just the, the powerful feeling of, of, of alienation and, and abuse and, uh, and, and just that, that rawness. I mean, does the movie do, do justice to the novel, do you think? What do you think? I mean... I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh, I'm waiting. Haven't. That's right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd be, I'm curious to see what you think. I think it's, it's different, obviously. I mean, I, I think that uh, if you take each, as like you said, each vignette is separate, I look at them as each separate little movies in a sense they're little stories and the actors are all different within them what they bring to it is all very very different some work better than others um i think it's phenomenally honest and powerful some are more moving and incredible uh i have my own favorites of what i like I, it's a different animal it's hard to bring something like that to the screen. But she was pretty fearless, like Baby Doll. We talked about that. You know, how she did Baby Doll. Which you, you, oh, you didn't see it yet. It, it's, it's an interesting, it's a problem. I, yeah, the, the problem being the graphicness of it, right? I mean, there's a there's the sense of, oh, we won't give anything away, but uh, there's a scene, and if you haven't read the book, where there's blood involved on underwear and that's very symbolic and to kind of capture that on film and the power of that it, 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 it seems a real challenge she also made some changes to the book as well 
Um, how do you feel about that? Like the ending has changed. Uh, well, the ending. I think it, I really like what she did. It's it it fits. It might have, we discussed it a lot. We talked about it. Um, I she wanted me to adapt it, and I just said I can't. It's, I can't go in there anymore, and it's too painful. I can't. And uh, but I was always available. We talked about it a lot, and I really think the ending is is it's very true and an abusive kid is very loyal just like an abusive dog it will it will be the most loyal follower will follow you anywhere and never break rank and that's the way it ends and you could look at it as sad or hopeful or you know who's to say that they don't go and get intervention and help you know i mean that's if you're alive you have the possibility of hope and intervention so how do you separate them? I mean, is JT Leroy and Laura Albert, are they two separate people in your psyche? I should be lying down on a bench <laughs> for this one. Um, are they two separate? You know, what I've said is when I, when, when JT was available to me, uh, it's kind of like Tinkerbell, you know, it's like Tinkerbell exists if everyone believes, you gotta believe. And sometimes I would look, I would open my eyes and I would see a reflection of myself in a computer screen or a window and I was always surprised. I was just like, that's not what I'm seeing and feeling. And um, I completely gave myself over. I mean, we had talked about this movie, Holy Motors, Mo Holy Motors, where, where it's just about he just gives himself over. So whatever he needs to do, he will do. Murder, whatever. And I didn't murder anyone. I, you know, published this fiction. You know, no, no pets were harmed in the making of. But um, I, uh, he was. There, there's. Um, JT doesn't live, but he exists. And that's what a famous historian said about Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and it's, you know. Yeah. We love Bugs Great. Bunny. We love Bugs Bunny. We all Looney love Tunes. Bugs Bunny. You're little Looney Tunes, I'd say. <laughs> we'll say it again. <laughs> You're a little Looney Tunes. You know, wait, wait, I just want to say it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What you did with the whole persona thing, um, I think that's one, as much as I love your writing, which I think is brilliant, uh, what made me have the reaction to you when I met you what was how you kind of pulled the wool over the East Coast establishment, the literary establishment's eyes, right? I mean... Side. Right. I mean, it's like we know we know that establishment. If you're not, uh, you know, at the right workshops, if you're not getting the right in the right master's programs, if you're not smoothing with the right intellectuals, it's very hard to crack that nut. And also, I think that establishment is not so much about the art, but about the perception of art. Yes. And you took the perception and you turned it on on its head, and you beat them at their own game. You kicked their ass, and the thing is, is they hate you. They hated you for it. I think they're starting to come around now. But but what's lasting and what's more important is that your art prevailed. I mean, that's why we're here tonight, right? Woo! You, you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You've talked about this before about how you didn't plan to do that. Talk to me a little bit more about that. It just happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, to me it wasn't, um, I didn't set out to burst onto the literary scene. I held and had bare, bore witness to a lot of suffering. And writing to me was a way always to relieve it. It's how do you take problems of the soul and spirit and transform them into issues of craft and technique so you can bridge a world that other people didn't know about or care about before. And that was my concern. How do I make you see and care about shit that you probably didn't? How do I invite compassion? I had experience where people really didn't care about stuff that I knew was phenomenally powerful and important for people to know about. 
And um, like you said, Looney Tunes, half a whack job. It was suffering, it was pain, you know, it was, uh, it, it's actually called, um, it's, a, it's a form of disassociation and where you, it was a way to separate out who I was and to remove myself. And a lot of art's created in that way instead of going crazy. And so it was an attempt at sanity. Now I think the reveal and everything reveals more about the, the culture and about, uh, I mean, I've been called, people have called for my death because of this. Death threats, seriously. I mean, the New York Times had fake fiction writer. I mean, the, the level of rage you wouldn't, you, you can't even believe. And that to me is interesting. It reveals more about our culture than it does about me. And I just think it's sad that when something new happens, people who claim to be on the vanguard or hospitable to art are really threatened and scared. And again, I think that's important to look at. And it should be like, I should disappear, but just like I'm very good at getting out of the way of disappearing, people should be able to look at, well, why, what was this about? And I think that's finally happening, where people are like, all right, we're done throwing our rocks, maybe we could look at this. Great, great. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the movie itself and, uh, and the making of the movie. I always find that interesting. Uh, you were on the set a lot, and you did some, uh, some script writing as well, correct? And um, from the, the little film that we're going to see right before the movie, with Aja Argento when they had a uh, conversation on Skype. Um, <laughs> there was a little tension on the set. Talk to us about that. Well, well <laughs> it was a low budget. I mean, well, it's three million. That's not that low budget. And, uh, well, first of all, I mean, we talk about it on the, I was, I was the assistant, right? And I was arguing with someone trying to edit the script about, uh, they were concerned about some of the language and getting into the particular about why you cannot change the language and rewriting the script about how you could possibly change it so it would work. Nobody paid attention to me. Nobody said, they just said handle it because I did always do that. So. I wouldn't, Azia and other people said they're trying to fuck with the script. I was like, I'm going to do it. And I had a British accent, so I was there being the assistant, being the British, with this, you know, West Virginian, we're in Tennessee, arguing with them and writing new script right then. And nobody said, what the fuck is this chick doing? Where often they would, you know, what the fuck? They're just, whatever, you know. So it was kind of like, Everything was accommodated, you know, it's just like when JT was walking around in white pants and having a period, well, you know, all right, whatever, you know, the assistant is doing script rewrites, well, whatever, you know, it, it was a cloud and the felt authenticity was more important than the details. So they thought you were assistant, they didn't know who you were? No, 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 no. I was Ospede, Os assistant. <laughs> Right, Anna. <laughs> it's all right, then, is it? So, also, you, in, in your conversation with Ozzy, Oz, yeah, you, you talked a little bit about how it was um, when you went in on the set for the first time. How it was like going into your dreams. Uh, what do you mean by that? The ironic thing is I had never actually been in a truck stop prior to that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> and then they're like, we made a detail for the book. And I'm like, good, <laughs> it's pretty good. And uh, I mean, it was like walking into, I was purging stuff as I wrote it. Because a lot of it was stuff from... I came from a past where I had been removed from my home and was a, in a ward. I was a ward of the state, I was in and out of hospitals, so I, I had a lot of stories from other people that I was carrying in my job in the group home, was you're the storyteller. So it, it, as the movie is compartmentalized, so is all the different stories that I carried and squeezed out at different times. And walking onto that set, it was like seeing all of this that I, 
I don't know, I don't, to me, rioting, why would anyone want to be a rioter? You're cutting a vein and you're bleeding out. And to me, it was like seeing this, walking into your dream as like some kind of matrix sort of movie thing. And, it, and again, it blew my mind that I had never been. So I was the expert on something I had made up. And it worked. <laughs> Yeah, I was in dreams coming to fruition. Ooh. Pretty, pretty spectacular. Pretty yeah. fucking spectacular. One last question before we go to the uh, the Asia Spike um, video. Um, any projects? What's going on with you right now? Well, I, I just want to thank um, before. Uh, I just for, I thank you so much, Scott. I I mean you've been just a wonderful support and being and. I love when you hear this guy's voice. Doesn't it make you cream? I mean, he's like, Scott, look here, KGM. It's like, <laughs> no, it's, it's just, thank you. And your cream piece is amazing. It's just very, you should see this guy edit. He's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. And, and I just want to thank everyone for coming. It's really awesome. It's fucking midnight and it's pride. And just thank you for coming. And thank you to the landmark. And thank you, Stephen, Dick, and Chris, and everyone out there. You guys are just very dope. And I we love you, Mama. <laughs> what am I working on? I'm trying not to get sued again. Um, I. I'm, I'm doing some screenplays and I'm writing, I'm writing, you know, there's, I'm always writing. I'm working on, uh, I don't like the word memoir, but I'm doing that. I'm working on the story and, you know, it's like, are you done throwing your rocks? Because, y'all, it's my turn now. Are you done? Because it's my turn. All right. So Sarah's coming out in a new ebook. And it's got a really cool cover by Matt Pipes, a local artist. And it's been all, all the mistakes, everything's been fixed by the genius, amazing creature, beautiful woman, Nicole. And the labor of love. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Enjoy the film. God bless. Yeah, your penis bones. <laughs> <laughs>